We're here with Andras Jones uh, from Nightmare on Elm Street 4 and the Attic Expeditions. Yes. Uh, we're going to start with John over here. Yeah, and uh, so how did you become involved with Nightmare on Elm Street 4? Um, you know, the way actors get involved with any show. I went on auditions and uh, the lead actress had a crush on me and so I ended up getting to play the, play the role. <laughs> Uh, your most recent uh, work was on the Attic Expeditions with uh, Jeffrey Combs. And uh, Seth Green. And Alice Cooper. Which is some, some And good, Wendy Roby. That's a, that's a lot of good talent right there. Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what were your memories in making that film? You know, how did that sort of compare to your past experiences? I mean, uh, there is nothing to compare it to, really. I mean, it was... It was really low budget. We, li I actually was living in the house where we shot it down in, in central LA. Um, the writer, the, the, actually the, the the high point, working with Seth Green, working with Jeffrey Combs, and getting to work with Rogan Russell Marshall, who I think is one of the most brilliant screenwriters going, and someone as far, especially in the genre world, someone who should definitely be working and writing more stuff because he's really something special. And uh, it seems that since the Attic Expeditions, you've taken about a 10-year break from acting. Are you planning to get back to it? I haven't taken a break at all. I've been doing Radio 8 Ball, doing the Radio 8 Ball show, which is a show I do uh, at Theater Off Jackson. I've done it in L.A. We do, I've done it on the radio. We're filming it for, uh, for, for webcasts and ultimately pitching it as a TV show. And, you know, being an actor... Choosing to live in the Northwest definitely has taken me out of the LA game, the LA casting game. But the acting game is sort of once you once you've caught the bug, you're always training. You're always getting ready for when the call might come. I mean, you've you've had a pretty diverse career considering that. How do you how does doing something like you know Radio Eight Ball compare to you know a big scale production like? Well, I mean, uh, I mean. Like a film like The Attic Expeditions isn't, I mean, it looks big scale in terms of what it, what shows up on the screen, but that was a pretty small scale production at the time when Seth was cast, it was before Austin Powers came out. He had done Buffy, but there was, you know, the biggest star at the time when we, all, when we signed on was Jeffrey Combs. Um, so anyway, so as far as Radio 8 Ball, it's just it brings together everything that I love. It has music, it has audience interaction, it has... It sort of it can it gets pretty deep in terms of exploring synchronicity, but it requires that I use all my acting chops as far as just moving the energy on stage and holding that space of the host and connecting with each person. And I mean that in and of itself is sort of an interesting change, though. You know, live versus stage. I mean, has it is it is it more exciting, more challenging as an actor because you have to do it on the fly because things can go wrong and you know there isn't multiple takes you aren't able to do it all over there you have to make it good that first time out well actually that makes it easier and, and the, the more you have to think of it's you know it is the more you have to think about something the more opportunities you have to mess it up the thing I love about Radio 8 Ball is I don't have any like I don't have any time to over plan it overthink it it's just by the time it's happened it's happened it's over um, so actually working on a uh, working on a film where you are being that exacting is much more difficult. I mean, it, it, that's part of the fun. With film acting, one of the big games is just solving problems. So, with you know, with Radio Eight Ball, if once a problem's happened, it's in the can, it's over. There's nothing I can fix about it. Whereas you do a film, you know, you want it after you you do a take, you want to do it again, you want to get it, you know, oh, I could put this other color on it, I could do it another way. So. It's just like it's using different parts of your brain. And I mean, I know you guys have done Radio 8 Ball at Crypticon this weekend. Um, is this something that you tour with, or where can people see this? Is it just they have to come to to Seattle? Yeah. Um, we've done it other places. We've done it in LA. We've done it in Minneapolis, Boston, New York City. Um, Seattle, Joshua Tree, um, working on doing more conventions. I'd love to do more with the Radio 8 Ball people. I thought Rodney's songs were, were awesome. He was great for it. Getting Robert to Skype in was yeah, really cool. That's amazing. Um, yeah, we, I'd love for it to be more available to more people. We're going to be getting more of the video up on the web from this last season pretty soon. And uh, where's the website so people who are watching this can go check it out? Radio8ball.com. All one word. All right. Thank you so much, Andre. Sure. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you.